Hello and welcome to episode 41 of the Nerds at Large Gaming Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Darby Hallman. I am Jeff Mayo. And Jeff, number one, how are you doing? Pretty good, pretty good. How was this week? Yeah. Yeah. All right, number two. Are the Patriots going to win another Super Bowl, Jeff? Probably. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I can mentally handle that, Jeff. I'm. I'm... All right, n- number three. Are the Patriots and Tom Brady and Bill Belichick actively making the football worse because of how it never changes? Um, yeah, it makes it far less exciting. Yeah, I mean, just the AFC in general is not exciting. I mean, it's impressive. I'm not taking. Yeah. I'm not one of these like people that are out there saying there's some conspiracy that the Patriots are winning because. It's rigged. I, I don't know. That ref cheered when they scored a touchdown. The ref did, the ref did get pretty excited. But, I mean, honestly, if a bunch of like dudes came around and started jumping around with me, I might smile too, probably. You know, I'd be like, hey, look, they're so I happy. Mean, I, I'd probably do that too. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I'm not a serious guy. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So I, I'm not saying that. And like, we're going to look back. They're the best team, best, like, best quarterback, best coach of all time. I understand all that. But God, it's so boring to watch. Anyway, <laughs> it's just, it's going to be on my brain where I'm going to talk about it again next week when we're actually gearing up for the Super Bowl. And I just like, I can already see, I can already see the the Eagles like coming out to a commanding lead. Mm-hmm. It looking like the game's over. Nick, Nick Foles is not going to throw an interception until yeah. the very end. Yeah, yeah. Turn until he's the game. Yep. Yep. It's the script. Yeah. <laughs> We've seen it played out so many times before. Jeff, have you played video games this week? Um, you know those little video game video game time we did in there. Mm. That's about it. <laughs> or I don't have too much more in you, but you you played you do have today is November um, November January twenty sixth. I am very tired, you guys. I'm sorry. Um, this is Dragon Ball Fighters Day, so you yes. did get Dragon Ball Fighters. You've yep. played a few matches. Yes. Do you like it so far? I I like it a lot. Undefeated champ. He is the undefeated <laughs> champ. We played several different rounds. We all took our turns trying to beat Jeff. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. I mean, anyone who watches our content shouldn't be surprised that I couldn't do it. But my roommate and his girlfriend also could not do it. And it was yeah. very sad. Maybe we'll have, to, we'll have to bring Will in here. Maybe he'll be the he'll have the secret sauce to to win. Well, his Dragon Ball knowledge. Yeah, yeah. But that game is like I love the fundamentals of the game. Seem like it's it's actually like it's a two D fighter type thing that I can understand, but it's not like your normal. It's also not like Mortal Kombat and stuff. It's a lot more fast paced than that. Mm-hmm. And it seems very uniquely Dragon Ball, at least to me. I mean obviously yeah. you would you're closer to it. So it just seems like it does everything right there, but it's it's not so over the top and so fast paced that I feel like I can't get a grasp of it. Yeah. So I am excited to try to get a grasp on it. I'm excited in that story mode, that ten hour story mode apparently. That's surprising. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, I expect it to be like five to six hours. Yeah. It's close to that just in cutscenes, apparently. Apparently, it's like four and a half, five hours in cutscenes. Because, I mean, like, they did a lot of, like, animating their own cutscenes. Yeah. Like, it's, you know... Yeah, it seems like they actually, like, put a lot of work into making it look like almost like a Dragon Ball episode. Mm-hmm. And I saw some of the comparisons to like the original Dragon Ball in the same cutscene done in Dragon Ball Fighters, and it like looks better in Fighters than yeah. it did in the actual <laughs> anime. It's kind of wild. That game is beautiful. Game it is. looks so, really, really good. I imagine next week I'll have a lot more Fighters, particularly the story impressions. Yeah. Will I get done with it? We'll see how school goes. Yeah, I mean, like, again, this is going to be, this time in our podcast, there's probably going to be a lot less of us being able to give our gaming impressions, because I'm so busy, I do not have much time Well, here's also some good news, and we'll get to a little more later, but there isn't that many, I mean, kind of touch on it later, but not that many games for the first, like, until we get done with school that we really want. Right. There's one announced now that we were on this at the very end, Mm. but I have to wait on that, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, like, you know, we might, if we are able to play any games, we might be catching up on some old ones, which is nope, still fun. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, but I mean, we have, have like, impatient. Hollow Knight, or no, that I keep thinking that was announced for February, but it's not. Sometime soon that has to be coming out. Yeah. One of us uh, might bite the bullet on Celeste, apparently, because it's amazing. It's not going to be me right now, but we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Um... 
I guess I mean, I did. I do want to talk about one thing. For I'm in a class that's like video games and history, just because like I needed one more credit hour for something and like some random elective thing. And obviously, I'm going to. I'm sitting here on a gaming podcast. I'm going to take the class that says video games and history. <laughs> so it's kind of like the class is about the way history is portrayed in video games. And um, for we we've. For the, like the first part of the class, we've had to play Civilization Five, and um, I've I've always known that if I got if I played a Civ game, I would like it because it's like up my alley with the turn based mm-hmm. stuff, the having to like like the Fire Emblem type thing where you're like moving your like warriors around on a thing or whatever. It's like Fire Emblem, but it's way deeper in the fact that you have military stuff you have to keep your citizens happy mm-hmm. you, you can expand your empire or you can like do diplomatic stuff there's like so many things you can do in there like you're just progressing through world history and it's pretty addicting like i knew i would like it but it's definitely one of those games you can just be like oh i'll just do a few more turns i'll just do a few <laughs> more turns and next thing you know it's like 2 a.m and i've definitely had several nights like that so at yeah. least it's homework yeah, I mean, technically, when I'm staying up till two a.m. playing Civ Five, I am doing homework. Yeah, you're a ruthless dictator, aren't you? I am Genghis Khan. <laughs> <laughs> I chose Genghis Khan, and I have um, taken over four different cities at this point. Oh, okay. Yeah, I uh, I now I I almost destroyed America, mm-hmm. but I couldn't quite take DC. It was a little too strong. I'm going to come back for him though. I have New York though. It's uh, kind of funny to see Genghis Khan. It has like all these Mongolian names for cities that I can't pronounce, and then I have New York. <laughs> this Genghis Khan controls New York. It's pretty amusing to me, at least. So, I mean, that's not a current game at all, but, like, it's pretty fun. I always yeah. knew this was a game series that I would like, and yeah. turns out I really do. It's definitely a time <laughs> sink, though. It's a lot of fun. Cool. That's really the only game I've played. Yeah. Like I said, next week I should have more Fires Impressions and hopefully The Impatient. Yeah. I have that now. Apparently it's really short. Yeah, apparently Jeff said there's some... He has not heard great things. Yeah. <laughs> so, Glad I got a half off. We'll see. Well, Jeff, are you ready, are you ready to get into the news? Jeff, yes. I am losing it. News jingle. <laughs> jingle, jingle, jingle. This is going to be a good one, Darby. <laughs> Woo! We have a lot of news today. Yeah. Well, not a lot in... Well, we have big, big news at yeah. least. I might have to sneak away and make a coffee while you're doing this. Okay. Because I am like, I'm just fading away, Jeff. Okay. Well, if you want to... I'll do that right now, actually. Yeah, okay. Okay, this first thing comes from Joe Scribbles from IGN. Microsoft has announced that all games from Microsoft Studios will now be added to the Xbox Game Pass subscription service on the release day, beginning with Sea of Thieves. Microsoft single out Rare's online pirate adventure, which comes out March 20th, adding that State of Decay 2, Crackdown 3, and unannounced games in the Halo, Forza, and Gears of War franchise will all be included. Launch last year, Game Pass is Microsoft Netflix-like subscription service, which offers access to a selection of Xbox One and Xbox 360 games for a monthly fee of $9.99. Um, until now, higher profile games such as Gears of War 4 took some time to reach the service. The service currently includes around 100 games. In the U.S., GameStop will begin to sell six-month Game Pass subscription cards for $59.99 from March 20th. Not um, yet clear if those cards will um, reach other regions. So, just in case you people are trying to do the math in your head, getting the card does not save you anything. Doing what doesn't save you anything? Getting the six-month card, it doesn't save you anything. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, during from month one. And this is stuff that's not in the IGN article. Um, Aaron Greenberg, head of Xbox Game Marketing, said this on Twitter, quote, Some of our Xbox fans have asked, asked so um, wanted to share, we're adding new Xbox One exclusives to Game Pass for the intention of them being a regular part of the value for being an Xbox Game Pass subscriber going forward. And um, Larry um, Herb, I'll just go that, a.k.a. Major Nelson added this in, you know, kind of quoting it. Um, in other words, the Xbox One exclusive will be per- a permanent part of Game Pass moving forward. The only reason that's important is some people thought that maybe th- these games come out on release day and then get taken off later. Right. This is them kind of confirming. It looks like, no, once they're added, they're staying. Then it seems like that's going to be the... Yeah, he said that's going to be the 
policy moving forward. Yeah. 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 They're going to get on there and they're going to stay because they own the rights. There's no licensing problem. <laughs> right, 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 right. So I thought that was important to note. Okay. I'm going to go. You give your impression. <laughs> okay. So my general impression. I think this is really neat. I think this could potentially be a game changer. Um, it might not be something... We may not see major change for a little while, just depending how this goes and depending how, I guess, other companies adopt, you know, you know, or, or respond to this idea or if other companies do it, like Sony or Nintendo or some third parties get on this with the Game Pass. Um, let's see. Sorry I did this to you, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. So, where are you at? You're basically just talking about I said, uh, I think it's really cool. Potential game changer. We may not be able to see the effects of it for a while. Yeah. I think, especially, like, when I first heard this, I was kind of, like, shocked. I was like, whoa, that's a big (laughs) step. I mean, that's a kind of gutsy thing. I mean, isn't it, like, to say, like, I mean, like, basically all... Here's all our first-party games, day of, for $10 a month. Right. Yeah, and and I think, like, people were saying, like, basically, if Xbox puts out two first party games in the year that, that you, you want, want then the, that's already the cost that you did for the game i mean even the, the potentially because the way this works you can unsubscribe and resubscribe at any time so yeah just play it as much as you want like it's a single player game just do it for a month if you beat it that's ten dollars then you can get off the game pass thing and it's just like and that's like us talking about if they put out two you get the cost of it that's that is if you don't care anything about playing old games the old Which games they have on there are good. Are really good. <laughs> yeah. And someone like me, I love playing old games. Yeah. So, like, Games Pass was already probably worth it for me, honestly, yeah. even before this. And then this is just such a big icing on top of the cake. Like, I mean, I'm just going to just be clear on this. The moment they release, like, a game I'm even interested in, I mean, the Game Pass, at least for that. Yeah, I mean, like, it's just... Depending, I might even get it for Crackdown until they just try it out. Ten dollars for month. I don't it's like not it. Not that big of an investment. Yeah. yeah. Even if you just let's say you got it and played Crackdown three for two months, then you spent twenty dollars to play Crackdown yeah. three, and then you can get off of it. I mean, mm-hmm. it's not that bad at all. It's like it seems like such a good deal that it makes. I don't know about you, but it makes me think: How is this working out for Microsoft? Like, how is this like add up financially for them? I. F- I'm sure they did, you know, the numbers. Like, they know more others than I do. Oh, uh, I'm sure. And but... I mean, even IGN put here, it's Netflix-like, so Netflix has to go through similar things. And I think generally they're losing money, technically. Mm. Um, I'm, don't take that as back to that part. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so they might be, you know, taking the gamble because they are behind. But this could be something they're doing to set up goodwill and stuff for the future. Well, and it seems like that's what a lot of Xbox's decisions recently have been very consumer-first decisions. And it kind of seems like they're doing it to make up that ground. Not not in the terms of, like, they're going to catch up with Sony or they're going to, like, make a bunch of money off of it. But like you said, going into next console generation, it'll be, like... Well, Xbox has all these different things. Has been doing all this. What's Sony doing? And yeah. when it comes to the decision of which of these next gen consoles I'm going to buy, you might go more towards Xbox. Mm-hmm. Just the only thing is, this strikes me a lot like the um, Windows like Play Anywhere thing that they did, where it's like it seems really cool and it's very very cool for the consumer, but. <laughs> is this going to be damaging for Microsoft moving forward? Because this is something like it'll be hard to have this and then take it away. Yeah. Like when the next Halo comes out, or you, you can't just take this away and be I, like, they oh, said you can't. specifically in they did, yeah, Halo. But in like, so is this indefinitely going forward? I, you know, you know what I'm saying. I could just see that coming back to bite them later on if they if it, they if the stops being worth it for them. Yeah. Um. In my opinion, they have to keep this policy from now on. They do, unless they get rid of the Game Pass altogether, which that's a whole different story. Right. But if they keep the Game Pass, they got to keep on doing this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, th- I think so, too. And it's just kind of like, I mean, it's a gamble. It's yeah. a gamble of, like, if this doesn't... it Like, there's two... There, I could see, like, two different routes of this. Either Xbox is pioneering a new way of giving... of game service where games in the future might become more like the Netflix model where mm-hmm. you pay a subscription and you get all these things. That's what we do for all of our shows that we stream, like most of them and stuff. 
So, I mean, like, there could be a future where we go that direction, and if so, then Xbox will be, like, the first ones doing it, and they'll kind of own that mm-hmm. ecosystem. Or, if it doesn't go that way, then you have a bunch of people who expect to get these games for $10 a month, rightfully so, because you're giving it to them, and that's a very hard thing to walk back. Yeah. So, it, like, this is great, but I just worry that this is not going to be a sustainable policy, and it's going to be very bad if it doesn't work, you know? Yeah, again, there's a lot to see, like, the different ways it happened, like, obviously, the, um, on Resetter, on just, you know, the podcast people, at least the ones I heard, are all for this, for the most part. Yeah, there's a couple of people that are against it for one reason or another, but generally, very positive. Um, the so people saying they haven't got Game Pass is obviously the thing that'll take them over the edge and they'll get the Game Pass. I saw a handful of people say, I'm going to get an Xbox now because I, you know, there's only so many exclusives and stuff and that the money adds up. Now you just need an Xbox, which if you just get an Xbox one, like one of the cheaper ones and game pass, yeah, even the that's S, all you, yeah. yeah, you don't have to get, I mean, if you're just wanting it for the Microsoft titles, you don't need to do more than $10 a month. And just like I said, to me, I mean, like it just depends on the different type of game, right? Like it. If, you, if you're not interested in playing the old games at all, then it still might be a question because, I mean, think about it. Last last year, Cuphead. What yeah. else? What Super else? Lucky's Tale. Okay. Halo Wars 2. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's like, it's not like Xbox has had the uh, most and stellar just, and just first, real quick, part, first party um, titles. I don't, think, I don't know if Cuphead counts towards this, though. It is a first. Kinda. Well, I mean, it's a, I don't it's, I don't know. It might not. You're, you're that's right. that's at most like a. Yeah, that's what was the wording? Did they say like all first party? I think they said Microsoft stuff? Studios titles. Uh, yeah, it might not count. Yeah, I don't. Know. I, don't I, think I, I really not. Cuphead's not, not on Game Pass as of right now, and they haven't said they're putting on there, but that doesn't mean they won't. Yeah, do. I didn't know if it was just like Xbox exclusives or if it's just it's actually like from their studio. So yeah, I mean like, and that's the thing. Because of that, depending on like what Xbox, if Xbox decides to ramp up their production of first party stuff or if it remains the same, this could be something that sounds a lot better on paper than it ends up being. Mm-hmm. But in the grand scheme of things, like this would almost be worth it alone just to try Sea of Thieves. I mean, like, wh- what do you think this means? That crossed through my head. <laughs> what do you think this means for Sea of Thieves? I mean, like, how how okay. good is this announcement for Sea of Thieves? This is great for Sea of Thieves because if you're on Xbox, especially you have gold already, mm-hmm. and you're interested in Sea of Thieves, um, you can try it out for, again, $10 a, a month. So if you don't like it, you just pay $10 and you can, there's plenty of other games that you can mess around with. Yeah. Um, and, you know, for that month, you just do it for that month. Um, and for people who are already in for Sea of Thieves, like I'm getting, I want the game anyway. It's great for them because that just adds the player base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that that and especially the way I, I don't know if you've seen, but like when they were doing the Sea of Thieves beta, I think it was like the most Twitch streamed game yeah. over the weekend or whenever the beta ran. It was like the the highest thing. I could definitely like Sea of Thieves being such a like you watch people on Twitch. They're having a blast, and you think, and that will sell copies of people like seeing other people have fun. They go out and buy it. That coupled with the fact that Games Pass just made the barrier to entry to get into Sea of Thieves like way cheaper. I could see Sea of Thieves having, if not an immediate sale like thing or whatever, a like long tail of like people yeah. just finding it and it becoming like I could see in October people are still just, oh. um streaming yeah. sea of thieves oh definitely if especially it was a thing just real quick i just something i remembered which kind of helps the whole sea of thieves trying out thing since this is the start of that yeah um if you haven't had game pass before you get a 14 day free trial yeah yeah which that's so yeah. i'm sure people will take advantage of that for sea of thieves definitely yeah you can yeah the fact that yeah the fact that this free trial thing will let you play sea of thieves for like two weeks <laughs> that's, yeah. that's pretty good see i'd 100 do that if I had, had gold. gold already. Yeah, so that's it's definitely more of a... But if you're already an Xbox player who plays Xbox a lot, you probably already have gold. So for most people, now, that's probably... Now, something already. for me to consider, and I might talk to you more I, 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 about this so you see how you get out of your thing this is. Um, it's a gamble. Like, I get the pass thing, and then I... Or the games with gold, and then I get the Game Pass free trial, and I get PUBG. So I have Sea of Thieves and PUBG for the gold thing. I wonder if that'd be potentially worth it. Yeah. 
I, I would definitely look in the Sea of Thieves. Sea of Thieves seems like from just the... Uh, I mean, yeah, definitely not, way to see how people think about Sea of Thieves. Well, well, and mainly I, where I'm going with this is that it seems like it's definitely one of those games that's better if you have people you're playing yeah, with true. that you can talk to and mm-hmm. stuff. I, I don't know a whole lot about Sea of Thieves, but it doesn't seem like it would be a great game to play on your own like yeah, without yeah. talking to people. And I think you're you're like me. I'm not talking to random people online with that thing. I'm going to be playing with my friends talking or I'm not talking. Yeah. And that seemed, you know. But I would love for all of us, like me, you, and all of our friends to be able to play. It's just that's never going to happen because yep. we have one Xbox between all of us. But yeah, I mean, I'll look into it and I'll think about that. I mean, mm. Again, I'm thinking about doing this at some point to at least try out one of these games. Yeah. 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 I would, I mean, see if Thieves are cracked down. Maybe like those are both. Yep. upcoming and I mean Sea of Thieves I love the idea of Sea of mm-hmm. Thieves it's just I think it's such a multiplayer game that it's yeah. hard to you know for one person but we'll see we'll see I'm definitely this is such a like I did not expect this announcement at all this is yep. a very big step now, for Xbox well, and all right, we got one more thing to t- or at least one more thing to really talk about this and yeah. um, I'm not talking about necessarily short term because I know the answer to that how do you think Sony's going to respond to this? I know, yeah. I know. Immediately, it's like they're not going to do this because crossplay, all that kind of stuff. Why would they? Right. But potentially, well, and in like the again, like we were just saying. I mean, again, I'm not trying to be the. I'm not trying to bash Xbox or anything. But we just talked about you get all like Microsoft Studio game or whatever. So that's maybe one or two games of last year. If Sony did that. <laughs> yeah, Dario. Yeah, let's, yeah, that let's say, let's would say be. Sony did this with all their first parties, ten dollars a month. Me and you would be having it right now. Oh, we would like. I would have so much more money. It would be great. <laughs> no, yeah. like that list would be enormous for Sony because I mean that's just the way that Sony operates. That's yeah. that's Sony's wheelhouse is those first or party the, games. Or whereas Xbox Nintendo is games. more like third. <laughs> Same thing with Nintendo. Like yeah. all the almost even more like at least just the percentage of Nintendo's catalog or the catalog that people care about that would basically be the whole thing. Yeah. Um. So yeah, like they're definitely. In the short term and even in the like next year or even potentially two year term, I don't see anything like that happening. But if this works for Xbox and it becomes like they are known as like the Netflix for gaming Mm -hmm. and that just becomes a thing going forward, I could see eventually a future where games in general or at least console gaming in general is a subscription type thing. My thinking is mainly, you know, this really applies to just Sony because, you know, them and Xbox are closer with everything. Um, next console generation, we were talking about, like, okay, um, you know, people were deciding which one to get for the generation. Xbox, all of these quality of life, consumer-friendly things. Give yeah. Game Pass, that could be the difference. Yeah. If it's really close, Sony may have to really think about, should we do this? I mean, I know they have PlayStation. Well, they do have PlayStation now, but... Who really cares about that? That's what, like, I have the sneaking suspicion that, like, a, a console reset is about the worst thing that could possibly happen to Sony. Because, like, yeah. Sony's able to coast right now because they're so far ahead. They exactly. Don't really have that, to that's do what I'm things, thinking with like, this thing. Like, if it gets there and it is close or Xbox ahead, Sony's be like, you gotta pull the trigger. If on I'm stuff. Sony, I either wanna get ahead of these things or I want to, like, let the PS4 ride as long as possible. Because, like, Xbox. They're gutsy moves, and it might not pay off, but, like, they're kind of smart right now. They're kind of doing a lot of, like, they're slowly and slowly, and you can just already see the Xbox ads or whatever with, like, Xbox has this, 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 PlayStation, none of that, you know, as far as all these can. I think it's kind of like, I don't know, this might be a bad analogy, but, like, the Amazon model, you know, kind of it's like that, where they do something kind of innovative. It's... Um, you know, they lose money for a while, but then at some point they just exactly. breaking it in. Exactly. I that's think what that's what Microsoft's been doing with all this stuff. And I could see it paying off for them. I could yeah. see it not, but I could, but if it does, and know. it may have to, like we, like I just said, make Sony think about. Well, we may have to do this stuff, crossplay, this. Um, well, redoing PlayStation now, pretty much making it so instead of just streaming, you can download the game. They might have changed that. I don't know. Yeah. I don't pay attention to that. And putting some of their first party titles in there. Yeah, I mean, we're just we are getting closer and closer to. If I had a lot of disposable income, I'd be like, sure, I'll get an Xbox so I can play all these old games. I can play all this. I can yeah. do this, that. You know, it's we're slowly getting more and more towards that, which is probably a good sign for them. But mm-hmm. 
And as far as Nintendo goes, I don't think to definitely never do that with first party. No, I would love for Nintendo to do this type of thing with older games. That's what I was saying. Yeah, I would love just make that the virtual console virtual thing. console to come in as a Netflix subscription style thing. I know there's been lots of like people want that a lot. I would love for that. To That'd be, be such a money maker. <laughs> yeah, it would. It would be great. I mean, you would have a consistent re- um, revenue stream like coming yeah. through that. Like, I mean, like, maybe they're doing numbers and maybe they're say- seeing that they would lose money, but I think. Who wouldn't want to buy into that? Yeah. I mean, like, it, it's just everyone wants to have those games, like, as a catalog. That's mm-hmm. the big thing they want. Like, a lot of people buy these older games and they never really play them much, but you just like having them there. And mm-hmm. Nintendo has the perfect catalog for that. It would be great. It would be yeah. great. So, we will definitely discuss the yeah. stuff in the future. We shall. Yep. And potentially if I bite on this. <laughs> we'll see. We'll okay. See. Next story, another big one. Well, we're going to Sony now. It is a pretty big one. Okay, so after much um, speculation and a couple of weeks. And lots of time. Yeah. <laughs> we now have a release date for God of War 420, Darby. Blaze it, son! <laughs> yep. <and laughs> they, alongside it, they released a pretty cool story trailer. Ho, oh, Jeff! <laughs> I, I I haven't really actually been able to talk to you about the trailer. Yeah. We just texted a little bit about it. like I had actually not seen it yet. You yeah, yeah. you texted me. I was in class. I was like, oh, you're definitely gonna be watching that later. <laughs> that trailer was awesome. Yeah. I mean, it once again it just shows you it showed you like some gameplay stuff and everything. But obviously this was more story. I was already into this even not knowing much about the story. I just knew that there was a kid and Kratos was more of a character and we were in Norse mythology and I'm like I'm there. This story seems emotional. Yeah. And it seems like powerful and like well conceived. Everything like Jeff. What are the odds that we that I cry during a God of War game? Because I think that there's a I think there's a, a de- decent chance. Decent chance. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because like something terrible is going to happen with that son or their relationship, and it's going to be sad, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I I imagine this did a lot for you as well. It did day one, I or mean, close because it's near end of semester slash finals. <laughs> yeah, it's a, that's the good, worst part about time. it's a good time to yeah. So, what do you think about the April the April date? Like, it's definitely like everyone's been saying March for so long. I it think I know. Seeming weirder and weirder, we, weirder as later as we were getting. I think it was supposed to be March, but something happened and got pushed back. That's I probably probably so. Wait, I'm fine with this. It's like, I can see the original plan might have been to it to be come out in March and have the release date at PSX or something yeah. or Game Awards or something like yeah. that. Yeah, but yeah, but I think April's fine. And as far as I know, that's pretty open right now, right? We have a list on here, Darby, of most of the big releases. We got nothing in April right now. There might be some stuff we forgot. Other than- Actually, nothing in April that was on our list earlier. That was confirmed. Yeah. There was We Happy Few, and but... <laughs> all the rumors for Red Dead are like June, right? Yeah. So, yeah. 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 I guess... So, do you have anything more to say on the game? I don't have all that much to say other than just I am I am buying this day one and I want it so bad. Yeah, yeah. Okay. What, yeah, I, I'm getting to what you had on here. What do you think this means for Detroit and Spider Man's release dates? Because that is a very interesting part of it to me. Because, like, yeah. I think we all, I think all of us kind of had a mental roadmap of when we expected these things to come out. I mean, it's probably because, based on what they said, because somebody said straight up Spider Man Detroit spring slash first half of 2018. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking that like all this means like it's loose when they say early 2018. It could just it could even mean halfway through 2018, and it's still like whatever. When are you seeing Detroit and Spider Man now? Because I think you, you weren't you were like saying Detroit for April, right? I was thinking. I, mean, I was thinking Detroit the... like April May ish. I mean, I, I definitely don't see it in April now. I could. See, but I, well, I guess if I was thinking April with God of War in March, I guess that really changed me thinking um, Detroit could be in May, potentially. But I do not see it, um, God of War, Detroit, and Spider Man three months in a row. Yeah. But, I mean, you also have to get out of the way of the inevitable Call of Duty and whatever else comes out in the like. I mean, they could release Spider Man in early, but... like, the September, August time. Yeah. Yeah, I think that could work. I mean, I think that definitely could work. I mean, you could have 
maybe God of War and Detroit kind of bumping into each other and then have, but not... The thing is about those two games, they're such different games. I don't think that matters as much. I think it's no. more of a thing of getting... Uh, well, you don't, even if they are different, you don't want too many of your first party or exclusives is, you know, that close to each other. And yeah. you probably don't want Spider-Man and God of War that close to each other. But a month might not be that bad for God of War and Detroit. No, no, no. Like to have this at the end of April, Detroit at the end of May. Yeah. Or even, well, I mean, June always gets into the E3 thing. I'm not sure Detroit's big enough to release no, no, around no. the E3. Well, and that. the rumor is Red Dead, then, potentially. Yeah, yeah <laughs> and it's the, the de- definitely not big enough to compete with Red Dead. No. For sure. <laughs> for sure not. Yeah, I could see that. I could definitely see that. I I don't know. The thing with Spider-Man, and when you hear people talk about, when's that going to be now? It's kind of weird, because, I don't know. Yeah. It's like... I think I, Spider-Man... I think, I think people have these weird rules. I mean, we kind of do, too, have these weird rule, rules about what can be released at certain times. Yeah. But technically, and all this is BS and doesn't matter. <laughs> yes, yeah. It's just... Yeah, we all do it. I mean, yeah. it's partially from what we've seen before and partially for we're just like, oh, well, this makes sense. But then, in the reality, it's I mean, like... I mean, yeah, we definitely use, um, you know, the history and stuff to um, inform, inform, like, inform what we're saying. Yeah. yeah. But saying straight up, no, it can't be like August, September, because these reasons, like, eh. Yeah, okay. I mean, I in mean, reality, they're making a game. Yeah. They have to finish the game first, and, and finishing a game in general is like takes an act of God to happen. It's a wonder yeah. that any game ever gets made. So it's like, yeah, I don't know if they're completely like thinking, oh, we have to get, a, to get away from Red Dead. We have to get away from yeah. this and this. It's more of just like, when when can this game get done? Yeah. Oh, it can get done here. Here we so, go. I mean, I'm saying on in September now. Oh, and I think Spider Man's big enough to release just about any time. Yeah, NBA. plus also, I mean, it's not like games don't get released in August, September. Because we had Destiny there, we've had um, the Mortar games. I mean, we didn't have it this past yeah. one. Things are changing. Now. Yeah, yeah. Technically, and when we did this past September, you mean we had Destiny this past? Oh, September. That's what, no, no uh, I mean the Mortar games. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, the first one I think was released in September. The, the last one was supposed to be they pushed back to October, but kind of the same thing. It was supposed to be released then, and that's. I guess that's a 3D action game thing mm-hmm. based on a popular franchise. So same thing in my mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. generally speaking. Yeah, yeah. For sure. And I think that's a good time. I mean, again, we don't know all the games that are coming out, but that'll be away from the rumored Red Dead date. Not far mm-hmm. away from um, God of War. Um, and before all the lot of stuff, all the big stuff you would think be happening in the fall. And then potentially whatever Sony might have in the fall. They've yet to. Sony has yet to have a thing in the fall since the PS4 is released. But who knows? Yeah. Who knows? I mean, it could happen. It's gotta happen sometime, right? <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, there's so it many could. other things that come out in the fall. Like, yeah. Sony has never had to, but they might. I mean, like, I just wouldn't say that it has to. But yeah, no. Yeah. Doesn't have we'll to. See. But for all the games they have, like saying some of them might be coming to 2018, like technically, Dreams and Days Gone both come out in 2018. Oh, Dreams. <laughs> yeah. Dreams can come out anytime. Dream, yeah. <laughs> That's whatever. <laughs> yeah. Days, I, yeah. Days Gone, if it comes out in 2018, will probably be the fall game. If it if it comes out in 2018. I know. I mean, if. <laughs> yeah. It'll be interesting to see. Yep. Well, I'm also kind of happy with the date because... Because you're like, going gonna to get high as hell, Jeff, right? You're oh, gonna yeah. You're going to be so baked. Yeah, yeah. Well, also, it's just kind of... So on a serious note, just kind of uh, it's kind of away from all the other games we're looking at really getting. It's away from well Kirby and away out of March. Mm-hmm. So I have time to pl- we have time to play those before God of War. And as far as like the you know when we went through our list, the games we're really talking about getting, the only one I potentially see coming out around that time is Project Octopath Traveler potentially. Please. And that though both are so different. One was on the Switch, one PS4. I probably just get both. <laughs> yeah. So. It's kind of a way. It was time to f- clear up our bat log at least a little bit if we can find the time. Need all the time we can get. Yep. That I don't have. So, I'm happy with the date. Yeah, I am too. Cool. Okay. Time to move on. Okay. Water break. Yep. Get plenty of those. So Jeff, you didn't do it right. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get there, Jeff. We I'll have a lot more podcasts. Someday, yeah. You can try, yeah. You can you, Okay, this comes from Jason Schreier from Kotaku, and I'm just going to go ahead and say it. There's only the first two paragraphs. This thing's a lot longer. Go read it. And it's a very good article, so yeah. go read Jason's. 
really any time follow Jason on Twitter. Anytime you post an article, read it because <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's get started. Over the past few months, Bioware has essentially transformed into a single game studio as it harnesses its teams to work on the ambitious multiplayer action game Anthem. Sources say. There are still small teens maintaining Star Wars The Old Republic and piecing together the new Dragon Age. I think they, just real quick, I'm sorry if this is wrong, I think they've said um, later um, later on that Star Wars The Old Republic, they're kind of stopping that. I think I saw, they. I think in the article they he said that he talked to people that said that, that was, they were talking about stopping it, but it was still okay. up in the air right now, I think. Like, I think, okay. so like, there was talks, like, it's probably going to be stopped soon, but they were not sure about it. Okay. I think. Yeah. So, Piecing out the new Next Dragon Age, which was recently rebooted, but the bulk of Bioware staff is in both Edmonton and Austin are now on Anthem. And there's a sense among Bioware employees that the company's future is inex- inextricably tied to this game. Um, Anthem, which was announced at E3 2017, is now scheduled for release in early 2019, according to three people familiar with the project. The fall 2018... Window mentioned during that E3 announcement was never realistic, one source said. Exact dates remain in flux, and Anthem's developers was also planned for a beta release, an EA Access launch, and an ongoing schedule for patches and updates. But it appears unlikely to developers that publisher EA will allow Bioware to delay the game any further than March 2019, when the company's 2019 fiscal year comes to an end and... Um, uh, Jason put here, EA, like most publicly traded companies, uses the fiscal calendar as a basis for all of its decisions as those days determine how investors will behave. So, yeah. Anthem Doom Darby. <laughs> <laughs> More on that later. Um, yeah, so some of this is not the most surprising thing in the world. I think Anthem, Anthem being pushed back in general is not a surprise. No. No. I, it's technically none of this is really a surprise. No, like I mean, like, yeah, I don't read any of this, and I'm not like shocked by any of it. But it is like you know, it it is concern. It, it it has an effect like seeing that in writing that Anthem, you know, because we we all know we all saw what happened with Mass Effect and drama and stuff, and with you know that there's no way that hit anywhere near the levels that EA and BioWare were expecting mm-hmm. for a new Mass Effect game to do and so like with that because like there was so much time before Andromeda like Mass Effect 3 came out a long time ago so and I would, and then Dragon Age Inquisition was actually the last one not Inquisition was 2040 but anyway it's been a while and uh, you know, we it, you get the feeling that there was a lot riding on Anthem, but to have this where it's like, you know, everyone feels like you're making this game, and it feels like the future of Bioware, which is arguably one of the one of video games' biggest developers, mm-hmm. that their future is tied to like the success of this game is kind of a scary thing. Yeah, and also it's never never comforting to see the like EA will like. They have to release March 2019, and yeah. uh, like hard line in the sand whether the game's ready or not. It has to release in March 2019, which I would hope we would learn that we need to stop doing this. You know, I you hate need that to, so much. <laughs> that you need to let games. If the game needs longer, it's gonna be better. You're gonna be better off in the long run if you release a better game later than a crappy game soon. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It getting pushed from fall 2018 to 2019. Okay, fine. That that makes sense. Ambitious game whatever that's only a little over a year and a half anyway yeah you know just going to 2019 that's fine and an important game you want to get it right yeah again and you've seen sorry i'm rambling but you've seen a lot with destiny and with i'm blanking but just there's lots of other examples of these like games as a service type games where like they almost never come out the gate right yeah i mean destiny destiny one and destiny two have had all kind of problems that they've had to fix as it goes like no one has really nailed this yet so i would understand like maybe we need to take some time to try to get this right and because anthem has an opportunity to do something to mm-hmm. with that friend that genre yeah well at least in my standpoint i'm probably not going to get anthem either way it's because it's not generally my type of game but yeah, it does look more interesting to me than destiny, destiny. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in my I, opinion i agree with that too <laughs> yeah it's i don't know it i it worries me like i i've never been a bioware guy like i've never really been into mass effect yeah. i tried inquisition and i really did not like it 
But I respect them a lot. I know they make like very well polished games, and lots of people love them. Like mm-hmm. Mass Effect, like people I know who don't even play games played Mass yeah. Effect. That's how big that was. So I really like. I'm pulling for them. I really hope Anthem can come out here and be a big success. So Bioware keeps being able to make games and stuff. It's yeah. just it just sucks that potentially this game not you know um, being good potentially or meeting expectations not because of them. Because EA is like, you gotta have it by this time. Yeah, it seems like that kind of that kind of pressure on the game is not good, and yeah. that kind of EA putting like doubling down and putting like all their chips in this basket is also not good. But mm-hmm. I think that, but I think this game really does have a chance to be something really special, though. I do too. Yeah, if they can get out and polish, it's based on what we've seen, it probably will be a big hit. I hope they stay away. Like I hope they don't try to show things because. I don't know about you, but I've thought about this, and I've heard people talk about it. Like, obviously, that the first and only time they've shown at them, it looked very, very good. But like, I'm sure you can too. I can already see when Anthem comes out the comparison videos between yeah. what they first showed and then how it looks actually looks, and it being like way less. That's what happens when you show a game that early, and you have to downgrade it. So I just hope that they stay away until they're ready to mm-hmm. do it. But Probably not. They'll probably be an E3 or something. Eh, I think being an E3 is fine if it's, like, especially it's supposed to be out by early 2019 by March. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's true. I mean, I imagine, I know we had it a bet, um, I put it as a bet this year and it didn't work, but I imagine E3 and then showing, like, it at the Game Awards or something. Yeah. I can tell I imagine that'll probably be something that'll happen. Probably. If it's, well, if it's not already out by then, by all means, it doesn't like it will be... So yeah, again, this is technically none of this is confirmed. So Anthem could still be coming out this year. Yeah, it's not it's not officially nothing official. But yet. I think generally anyone who follows video game news trusts Jason and his whatever sources he has. Yeah, yeah, very rarely wrong. It, Jason writes it; he's pretty sure about it. Yep, very good. And uh, I hope it's good for Mister William Outlaw's sake. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think he's pretty he's pretty interested in Anthem. Oh yeah, just real quick, I have trouble remembering who's excited for what. Will was excited for God of War, right? Yeah. Okay. I know we kind of sound like the text, but I, I don't think remember. he's as excited as like me and you because we're like just day one, like want this. But I think he's pretty excited. Yeah. For it. It'd be pretty dope if we all got a day one. We can just have a three-way like spoiler cast for a recently released game. Yeah, that'd be awesome. And it would like throw me back to the that week when like Bioshock Infinite and The Last of Us came out, and like all of us like played it. We were all just like talking about it. Like, yeah, yeah. Well done, so. If only it came out a week later because it comes out. I looked the week my last week of class was actually busier than my exam week. So I have two that exams the last two days. That happens yeah. a lot with me too sometimes. So we better forget it before exams. And you'll be too busy um, playing with Labo. So you won't be able to play golf. You're right. Yeah. I'm not getting Labo. <laughs> okay. All right, let's move on, Jeff. Uh, well, we're staying with Bioware already. We are. This is the most we talk about Bioware ever, probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> um, this comes from Shabana Arif, my IGN. Sure. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> we're terrible people. Yeah. Bioware's Casey Hudson has said that on the end development Dragon Age game will be a quote live experience which means designing a game for continued storytelling after the main story on Sweet Game Trailer Twitter Hudson confirmed that the game will remain story and character focused but added the idea of it being live afterwards I don't know what this means yeah it's very weird like I feel like the a live game has become a dirty word like some of the other things it makes it sound like it's gonna be I thought when he you just associate live game with microtransactions and DLC things or whatever. And uh, I like took it as different. I don't know why. Like I, I don't know. When I heard lot like just before reading like the when I just saw the headlines like they say Dragon Age can be live or whatever. I was like, wait, so it's gonna be like an MMO? <laughs> uh. <laughs> That's what I took it as. <laughs> The term, I mean, that would make more sense, honestly, with the terminology. But I mean, I think live game has just become another weird shorthand for. I think it's because no one wants to say games as a service. Because number one, it's a clunky term. Term, and number two, it like say it has a bad connotation at this point. I don't know. MMO Dragon Age could be dope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <honestly. laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm not that interested in Dragon Age. Anymore. I, mean, I want to get it, be, but I could see. Yeah, that could 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 work. Could yeah. work. I mean, let's there you go. Free. That's free for you, by the way. Jeff, Jeff, Jeff just pitched the new Dragon Age. Yep. So, 
Yeah, I don't know what those mean, but I guess it's... I don't know what the problem's like. I know Inquisition went all the words. I don't know what, like, what problems people had on it, because you're not alone and not like, loving it. Yeah. Right, yeah. So, I wonder if it was, like, storytelling and characters and stuff. A lot... I mean, a lot of it was that stuff. The biggest thing was just I hated the combat. Mm. Just did not like it. It was this weird, like, it was action-y, but then you couldn't actually, like, swing your sword. You basically just, like, pressed the button and you swing. There was just lots of things that did not fit with me. But that's me. Want to hear some good news, Darty? I do, Jeff. Okay. Let's go from Alex Gilead from IGN. Former Uncharted director Sean Eskeg and Dead Space producer Stephen Barry have joined the Avengers Project game developer Crystal Dynamics announced. Eskeg joins the team as creative director, while Barry will serve as director of production. Eskeg is the creative director and writer of Uncharted The Lost Legacy and worked on The Last of Us as the director of photography and animation supervisor. He was also an animator at Industrial Light and Magic, and he said about this, I'm thrilled to join Crystal as creative director and be aligned with a team as passionate about telling great character-based stories as I am. And, um, and quote, Barry held several positions at um, EA with his latest role at the company being the director of product development at Visceral Games. Barry said about this, quote, Crystal has been around almost as long as I've been in the business. The immediate chemistry and camaraderie has been exactly what I hope for, end quote. I like this news. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, like that we're, I like that we're just in general hearing more about this game. Like, it's slowly becoming a game. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the things. It's like, oh, they just added a creative director. Well, this gets old. <laughs> Even further than we thought, potentially. I don't know how this works. Probably. Unless but just, the, you know, I but. found good news about this. I can, well, not, just because of how far away it is, I haven't been paying attention to the news, even though we've kind of discussed it that much, or I've tried remembering. I thought there was a weird thing at some point, it's like going to be like a game or a service or some kind of weird thing, mm. but them adding SK, for example, gets me, makes me feel good, because it's going to be like a story character driven game. Yeah. And, oh, and Dead Space. Closer to Orange, yeah, and Dead, Dead Space, Space too, both of them. This yeah. makes me a lot more excited for this game. Me too, yeah. <laughs> I mean, and just... It's it's starting to get to the point where like the people working on this game, it's seeming like such a super group of game developers that it's like I don't want to hype it up too much or something, but it's starting to seem like I'm would be shocked if this game does not end up good. Yeah. Just with Crystal has proven themselves with the Tomb Raider games, which I love. I love both of those games so much, and have you know Uncharted people, Dead Space mm-hmm. people. They've. I, I know. I know they've added more people. Yeah, we like, we've had several of these where we talked yeah. about that these people are joining them, whatever. And it seems like, kind of like Insomniac, not that Insomniac was not an established developer; they absolutely were. But I feel like Spider Man's going to be the thing that like catapults them mm-hmm. into like top status, and this could be a similar thing for Crystal. Yeah. Like Crystal proved themselves with the Tomb Raider games and this could be the thing that just launches them forward. Mm-hmm. And we've said it before, props to Marvel for and I guess Disney allowing like people to use their properties like this to make these kind of games. In different ways. And going yeah. after the good talent and yeah. not just not necessarily using um like in house stuff. Yeah, not being like, afraid to I not paired to DC like well Rocksteady and another one that's fine making their stuff, but but yeah, I wish that maybe they spread the love a little too. Yeah, and I guess like these could get. I mean, like we almost like Rocksteady and another round thing just kind of seem like not the same thing because they've been around a while and there hasn't been anything else. I guess we might in a few years be like, why is it always just the Crystal Dynamics <laughs> Avengers games and the Insomniac Spider Man games? So you know, this is new for us where yeah. that's not. But well, we just lost the video. We have to get unplugged at some point. Yeah, it did go dark. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, for our people watching, I guess you may have video for about half of it. Well, let's finish this discussion, and then I'm, I'll, like, I'm, I might try to fix it. But, anyway, hey. Hey. Um, you have anything more on? I don't know. I'm excited for the hear more about this game. Who knows in the world where we, if we'll even hear about this year. Who knows? It sounds like it might be far far enough away. Where we might okay, be, if we don't, if it's not, they don't feel like it's ready enough for E3, or you know, they just show it really early because Square Enix, yeah, um, Game Awards, at least something mm. by then. Mm. I don't know why I'm putting everything in Game Awards, but it just makes sense. <laughs> game Awards were pretty big this year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I think it's in the discussion. Okay, hey Jeff. Hey, we are back. Yes, we are back. Um, so, Dar, you want to stay with more people joining Square Enix related stuff news? 
No, Jeff, no. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. This comes from Joe Scrolls from IGN. Yuji Naka, one of the three creators of Sonic the Hedgehog, has announced that he joined Square Enix that's this year. <laughs> hey, he one of the creators already, so he's part of the good games. You mean he didn't do the um, werewolf game or forces? Uh, Did I definitely not forces. <laughs> Announced through his Twitter account, Naka explained that I'm joining game development as before and strive to develop games at Square Enix. I am to develop an enjoyable game. Please look forward to it. And no further information. So, I mean, has he been making things, like, since then? Uh, I actually looked at his thing. He actually has done a lot. I forgot a lot of the stuff. Like, I know he was, like, at least early on, very, very heavily involved in, like, Fantasy Star Online and stuff and just other things. And he was on a lot of games, kind of more a producer role okay. type thing. Uh, I don't think he's anything much crazy, so I'm like, this is cool. Yeah. Add more to screen. And just based on the stuff, just, well, like with Fantasy Star Online, just kind of boost the whole JRPG thing, and then from the Sonic angle, it's like, that's something a little different that they don't have. Like, Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I like that Square Enix seems like in the in the last few years of just getting more diverse with that type of thing. Like, I mean, they already were with their Japanese and then American like offerings, but mm-hmm. like it's becoming more and more that way. I mean, the fact that you have, you know, everything from the Tomb Raider games to freaking Life is Strange to all the Japanese stuff to the and it's Octo- recently Octopath yeah. and so yeah, Hitman. Before, yeah. So. Maybe the funniest thing I thought was also funny, like it's like a hedgehog guy going to Square Enix. <laughs> Good little story. Well, I'm sure we'll mention whatever game he's working on at some point. Yeah, I was going to say, like, platformers, but it's like, we're probably just talking about Sonic because that's his most notable thing. That might not be what he actually works on anymore. I don't know. We don't know. Or or at least I don't know. You might, yeah, yeah. Okay, final news story. It's not much, though, but we have it this week, so we're doing it. We might bring it up next week. Yep. Um, Yeah. So, Xbox Games with Gold was announced for the month of February, but not... PlayStation Plus. PlayStation. Come what on. What are you doing? Either PlayStation is late or Xbox is early. Honestly, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but Xbox, this is your week to shine. You get all of the nerds at large attention. You all technically yourself. win this week. You win for once. <laughs> yeah. By default. Unless Until it's, next week. Unless it's just so bad that they lose by default. I have not actually loaded the list. So Okay, here, here are the games. Shadow Warrior for Xbox One. Assassin's Creed Chronicles India for Xbox One. I heard those are not that bad, so they, they're, they're fine. Yeah. Yeah. Split Second for Xbox One and Xbox 360. You never heard of it? And Crazy Taxi. Taxi. Xbox One and Xbox 360, but without the Offspring tracks. Without the what? Offspring. Like the band? Yeah, I think so. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, apparently, <laughs> but without them. <laughs> so people are upset. Darn. Does the <laughs> Offspring just play in the background, or is it actually no, no, no. Offspring? I mean, you're in a taxi, so Rain theme. Also. Yeah. Oh, okay. I assume. I honestly don't know much about Crazy Taxi. I don't know either. People just kept on mentioning it. I've heard people talk, well, people as in Greg Miller talk about Crazy Taxi, yeah. but I've not played it. Is Crazy Taxi one of those easy platinum games? Probably. I think it is. The it's Greg the plays. Play. Yeah. Hey, if I had a game, I'd download this and we play it for the, the lulls. For the lulls. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I mean, I heard those, that's like the side scroller thing, right? The Assassin's Creed Chronicles thing. Those, oh, yeah, like the so, 2D yeah. ones. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I heard people say I know Andrew right. Renee said there we go. Yeah. I mean, I heard some mixed things, but be, uh, everything, everyone well, was at least... It's a smaller least... thing, so it, I mean, it sounds like it's just a solid little side, yeah. side game. And it's, it's a cool fine. thing to take a, take one of their big franchises like that from Ubisoft, and I'm guessing let a different developer do something like that. I'm guessing that wasn't the same developers who make it. Plus sense. the location is interesting. Yes. It, yeah, it's a little way they can test the waters on new different locations before they make big games on it. So, so Jeff, who wins, who wins this week? <laughs> Crazy Taxi wins. Crazy Taxi. Okay. Congratulations on your So that's win. it for the news, Darby. Um, you know what time it is, it, I do know what time it is. It is game time. I can't I can't lose to anyone, though. I can only lose to myself. Yep. Okay, so we have seven questions. Or seven things, Darby. And this is the way it's going to work. This this game was inspired by Dragon Ball Fighter's Metacritic score. Oh, jeez. Um, the fact that it is by, like, ten points, the best rated Dragon Ball game. No Dragon Ball game before this point was rated above 80. <laughs> that's not surprising. I, that's what I thought when I said that. That's not surprising. I'm sure other people were like, oh. I'm like, no, <laughs> that sounds about right to me. Best games just objectively sound like at best high 70s. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then also just partly because we had a lot of great review scores week for like Celeste and Monster Hunter, both reviewing great. 
Okay. I'm hoping that your inspiration comes more from the review score side and not the Dragon Ball side, because I will lose any question. Oh, don't worry about that. You ask me about Dragon Ball. Okay, so <laughs> I got seven series here with three choices. You got to tell me which game has the highest Metacritic score. Okay. okay. <laughs> it's a And it's a whole like series, or it's like a game that you're talking about, like... Hmm. Wait, sorry. Say oh no no! I mean, yeah, I'm gonna name the series and name three other games. Like, uh, it's gonna be the top all three rated right games. Series. You gotta tell you which one has the best. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I don't want to make it too crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. But some of it might get too obvious if I do that one. And just a couple notes. All these scores are close. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Important to note as well. So you got to think about little things. And also, as far as the order I'm saying them, I'm only doing it by the time of release. So makes sense. Okay, first, ready. first series, Metal Gear Solid. You have... <laughs> Maybe I'm not ready. I'm, I'm sorry, Jacob. If you're listening, I'm sorry for how bad I'm going to be. Yeah, A, Metal Gear Solid 2, Sons of Liberty. B, Metal Gear Solid 4, Guns of the Patriots. And C, Metal Gear Solid 5, The Phantom Pain. It's not 2. That's the right one. Mm-hmm. No way it's that one. I know Metal Gear fans love 4 like crazy. Mm -hmm. People in general like 5, but Metal Gear fans don't like it as much. God, that's hard. 4. It's 2. It's 2? That is the Raiden one, right? Yeah. I thought people hate that one, or a lot of people do, or at least had more problems with it. You gotta think critic starting. Okay. Okay, and, yeah, and of course I had the scores here. Just was I to... right between the other two? Or do you have the scores? I do. I have here. No, four was the lowest. Dang. Yeah, it was two had a 96. Jeez. Five had a 95. Four had a 94. <laughs> wow, those are close. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. I thought for sure. Maybe it's just maybe it's just the people I hear. I, I know people are very passionate about their yeah. Metal Gear fan the games, so maybe uh, it was no, just... Darby. Okay. I think it's one for you. It's the Sly Cooper series. Oh, jeez. Here we go. Hey, Sly Cooper and the Thievius Raccoonus. All right, all right, two's number one, but uh, I'm just guessing. But no, say say them so I can see. Say them so. I can B see. Sly Two Band of Thieves, and okay. Sly to the Honor Among Thieves. I mean, Sly Two is the best one. Full stop. But. I'm gonna say I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that pe- people are smart. Two, Slide two. Slide yeah, you're, two. Right, you're right. Two yeah. had people, people know what's up. Two had 88. Um, one had 86. Three had an 83. Hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, that's probably that's and, the way I would order them too. Um, the newest one had like a 75. Wrong. <laughs> that game is better than a 75. People, okay. but no, Slide Two is the best. Next one, Mario Kart. <laughs> Oh boy, this is weird. <laughs> so it's such different time periods. A Mario Kart Super Circuit, B Mario Kart DS, and C Mario Kart Eight Deluxe. That's weird. Um, Mario Kart Eight Deluxe. Wrong. It's Super Circuit. What is Super Circuit? I can't remember. <laughs> what? Like what is? What? <laughs> what did it come out on? Um, let's see. Let's see. Uh, Game Boy. <sighs> come on. Uh, yeah. So it was Super Circuit at ninety three, um, DS at ninety one, and Mario Kart Eight Deluxe at ninety two. So, oh yeah, just an interesting um, factoid. I know you. We might have discussed it when it came out, um, but uh, Mario Kart Deluxe. Like scored like four or five points higher than the original. That doesn't surprise. I mean, yeah. like the way that people talk about it. Yeah. The switch. Uh, yeah. The switch hype. The switch bump in scores. Mm-hmm. Makes me sad. <laughs> Some Game Boy Mario Kart game. Who wants to play their Mario Kart on Game Boy, Jeff? Give me one second. Nobody, Jeff. That's the answer. Is nobody. Feel the air, Darby. I'm, I goofed. I, I'm just mad because. Mario, there's no way that Mario like this is what happens when you get like old games that weren't around when we had Metacritic and all these things is it's wrong because there's no way that Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is worse than a Game Boy Mario Kart game 
Okay. I have it now. Okay. Sorry. Moving on. Next series, God of War. Mm. A, God of War 1. B, God of War 2. C, God of War 3. <laughs> <sighs> so these are critics. Yes. That is rough. <laughs> Because at the time of the old God of Wars, like, they were a big deal. And, like, I'm sure that they were ranked very high. Like, I think all of these are going to be in the 90s. Mmm. Mmm. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> this is hard. God of War... God of War 2. Is that your final answer? <laughs> I mean, I can't back all that. Yeah, sure. Wrong. It's three. Is it's it, one. Is it one? <sighs> this is the, again, a lot of these are close. <clears throat> God of War is the highest one, and then each one had one less point. <laughs> <laughs> they just came, they were so, like, God of War 1 and 2 were in a different time than 3, and it's like, I don't know. Okay, Darby, to win this game... This is you, rough. You, you got to win, win out. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not. At winning. least you got Sly Cooper right. Not winning this game. I'm happy about that. Yeah. So. I was going to vote for two no matter what for Sly too. I just wanted that to be known that I was going to yeah. be. Yeah. Okay. Darby. This next one. Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. We, please, please be all bad ones. Remember, these are the top ones. <laughs> I didn't know if you were going to just throw a curveball and they were all going to be at the bottom. But <laughs> I, I could have, but yeah. I'm trying to be consistent. Yeah, yeah. A, Sonic Adventure 2. Okay. B, Sonic and Sega All-Star Racing. And C, Sonic CD. I don't know enough about Sonic. I don't even know what that racing thing is. Sonic Adventures 2. Wrong. Sonic CD for the iOS. What? <laughs> yeah, okay, and the Sonic and Sega All-Star Racing was for iOS 2. <sighs> okay. It, it was weird. I was like, at that point I was trying to look through our stories and like, I'll just take stuff from the, you know, use the mm, stories for inspiration. Like, about. <laughs> Sonic would be fun. It's like, iOS I'm not surprised, games. but the two highest ones are iOS games. <laughs> Just dumb. And then I looked at the reviews like, oh yeah, these are all um, mobile review sites. Mobile game or, like review sites. <sighs> that that I'm not that's dumb. This, this was a troll question. <laughs> <laughs> that was a troll question. <laughs> fine, fine. So I lost, but we'll yeah, see if we I got can two more. Redeem myself at all. Next one. I had to do this series story. Final Fantasy. Oh jeez. This is, these are the three choices. Final Fantasy is so weird. Cause it doesn't matter what critics say. Everyone has their favorite. It's weird. But Final Fantasy VI Advance. So wait, what did that come at? What was that? That was on the Game Boy Advance? Yeah. So, okay. I guess technically these are out of order, release date, month, or whatever. Um, B, Final Fantasy VII. And C, Final Fantasy IX. Hmm... So these are all like Metacritic scores. So these yeah. are like, I mean, they take from like just of all time. Like even if someone like re- reviewed Final Fantasy VII like this year, would it like, is it just like, um, okay, I'll say this. At least is the way it should be. Like if you're thinking about playing on a PS4, it does not count that. Yeah. Like it should be just the PS1 version. Okay. I mean, so are these all reviews like from the nineties? Like, is, I don't know how Metacritic does this, but <laughs> they all should be. Okay. Or at least from the 90s version of the game. Except for Advance. Because Game Boy Advance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm between 6 or 7, so it's probably 9. <laughs> That's usually how this <laughs> game has been going so far. <laughs> Screw it, 7. It's going to be six or nine. It's nine. It's nine. <laughs> yep. Whichever, like, 
I, I think almost every single one of these that I've gotten wrong, the one that I had at the bottom has been the right answer. Yeah, so 9 had 94, um, 7 had 92, 6 advanced had 92, and fun fact, um, 6 and 7 were tied at 92 with Final Fantasy X and Final Fantasy XII. Those are all very good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're all like right there. That's pretty great. So I had to, I figured the trick you were six and seven would do it. Yeah. I mean, like, I I was thinking like six is kind of something that people talk more about now than they did yeah. probably. I mean, you know, six is just aged well, but. Well, I did, I did, <laughs> did pretty bad that well, game. Well, too. we got one more, Darby. Oh, I thought that was it. Yeah. I can do even worse. Just wait. Yeah. So let's see if you can get two out of the start. It's two out of seven. Super Smash Brothers. So we got Melee, Brawl, and Four Wii U. Ugh. Ugh. These are so weird because the time they come out means so much. Because Brawl is objectively like one of the worst ones. I love Brawl, but it, you know, like just well made, but it's like the Wii. Everyone loved the Wii then. It was such a big thing. Like, I mean, Wii, the Wii U one is the best. Full stop. This game was trickier than I thought it was. <laughs> it's pretty hard. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have not like been confident in any of these. Melee. Brawl. That it's wrong, then. That's wrong. Brawl at 90. That is objectively wrong. Brawl at 93, Melee and Wii U at 92. Objectively wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Metacritic, you, you're wrong. So, you got one out of, <laughs> one out of seven. Darling. So, I did just as bad as Will did last week. So, I'm, you know, that's the company I keep is down here at the bottom with Will. So. This, I figured this was going to be easier for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> did, did those seem obvious to you? Because they definitely didn't seem obvious to me. It's, it's um, so hard with Metacritic, because especially with old games in Metacritic, because it's not like if these games were reviewed all together now, it would be completely different. But like, I think some of these are more obvious than others. Here, like yeah, Slide was definitely the most obvious one since we're, you know, especially since how familiar we are with the series. Um, yeah. yeah. I feel like maybe they're not necessarily completely tricky. I mean, Sonic was a troll one, full stop. Um, I think it's more like, yeah, some of these are kind of tricky and stuff can go either way. You just happen to choose wrong a lot. It did. Because most of them do make six, nine made sense. Mario Kart, eh, it could be anything. You just hear so many more people talk about seven and six than nine. Yeah. I think they're, like, there are more fans of seven and six than nine. Mm -hmm. But Metacritic's so weird. It's so weird to tell me. Metal Gear Solid, I probably would have picked two, to be honest. I guess I just hear the wrong people. Because everyone yeah. I hear is like, that's their least favorite. But I don't know. That's the way. It... Well, I'm a failure. <laughs> Another game done, Darby. Yep. yep. Your first failure. It was my, my first loss. I am three and one or something like that. Mm -hmm. I believe. That's All right. Good. Jeff, are you ready for the main topic? Top, top, top. <laughs> Someone's got to keep it going. <laughs> um, uh, anyway, sorry, lost my train of thought. We are going to, Jeff, we're going to get a little more serious this time than we have in a while. What? I know, it's, it's crazy. No, um, we're not going to talk about Nintendo again? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're, all, we're just going to talk about Mario for a full hour, so get strapped in. No. Uh, <laughs> Game of the year, I heard. There's been a topic when me and Jeff were talking this week about what we wanted to talk about, like in the main topic, and we like didn't really know what we wanted to talk about, and then just one thing we were like going back and forth in text, and it just seemed obvious that this was going to be where we were going. There's been this, basically where we got this, we're going to talk about kind of sensationalism in games media, and just like some of the problems in that, and how in, you know what that does for game development and everything. This kind of came from in Jason Trier's article from this week. He talks about how the for Bioware and people the people on the Anthem team, part of what is causing them lots of anxiety and, you know, stress with the game was big YouTubers and lots of like prominent games media people, you know, kind of overreacting to the EA stuff or just like 
spreading mis- misinformation or just generally like taking a very aggressive and just kind of like mm-hmm. inflammatory tone about Anthem, Bioware, EA, just everyone involved in all of that. Yeah, I know we have an example in particular for the Anthem thing. Yeah, and that's because, um, and Jason even said like on Twitter, he like after he posted his thing, he said that, I wasn't going to quote this one, so I don't have it, but he basically said after he posted the article, he's like, I've seen this before, like, this is going to cause, this is going to, my article is going to be the source of lots of inflammatory and sensationalized headlines of, like, Anthem's on fire, Anthem's delayed, it's terrible, everything's falling apart or whatever, and he was basically saying, like, that's that's basically the problem. That's what he literally, I like, outlined in his article is mm-hmm. that these things, these reactionary things are the problem. And then he later um, tweeted, which I have lost now. Oh, he retweeted the no from Rooster Teeth, which I, they're far from the only one to do things like this, but they're the example that Jason highlighted, the example we're going to talk about. He retweeted a, a caption of like their a video they put up that said, Delay Bioshock, uh, Bioshock, Bioware struggling to fix Anthem. And it's just, it's kind of exactly what he was saying. He tweeted that and said, Like clockwork. When, which is actually fall. I mean, that definitely means um, the no. Like for example, at least that thing, at least the headline doesn't go with Jason's article because yeah. I don't think I had it in there. But I think um, Jason had it in the article at some point talking to a buyer where people was like um, they were talking about um, like how people felt about the game, like asking if um, I can't remember the exact wording, but they pretty much said that. No, they feel a lot better about it than they did before. Like, well, yeah, he was say he said it went from he was asking like if it was like, you know, Bioware is doomed or is it just game development hard or whatever? And he said yeah. it was like it used to be the former, now yeah, it's the yeah. latter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. That's, <laughs> yeah, no problem. <laughs> I just remember. Yeah. So basically, yeah, that goes against what the nose. Yeah, even in Jason's article, he was saying like, no, Anthem's improved. Like Anthem seems like it's in a much better place now yeah. or whatever going forward. And this is just like one example of the no. Like like I said, there's lots of this, but I'm, like the no is just the example. If you go and look at their stuff, almost every single one of their headlines are something like this, where it's you know this is terrible, or is this even any good, or like so and so did this. It's just like they take any like shred of fact and kind of just like turn it into something that's clickbaity. It's just like very very clickbaity headlines clickbaity like ideas like that and sometimes it doesn't even i've used to watch a lot of their videos and sometimes even in the video wasn't really that inflammatory or something they more just said the news but they got you in there with all of these very very Mm -hmm. sensationalized headlines and topics like that and it's something i kind of like it's always bugged me but then this week i just kind of you know, with the, with this story in particular, it just kind of was such a glaring example of this this type of thing, and it's something I want to talk about because it's kind of and it's not something that like I I get that when you're running a game when you're running a media site like this like getting clicks is an important thing to do, and I don't think anyone is completely immune to these things happening. Like even some of my headlines that I've made for our podcast. You could probably say some of them maybe cross the line at some point. But I think the issue where I get to is there's a lot of sites that are not even... They don't even have like... Like when they're making their headlines and making their videos like this, they're not trying to show exactly what's happening and show just a fair analysis of Mm -hmm. it. They're trying to get clicks with things and they're like intentionally twisting things in order just to get attention. And I think that as people like sharing news, I think there is an importance to try to, you know, to try to like fairly show what's actually happening. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. What do you think? No, I generally agree with you. Yeah. Uh, I think I texted you this last night when you brought up the nose. Like, I usually roll my eyes whenever their videos come up for most of the time with their titles. Because, yeah. yeah. like, especially with the exam, it's like, uh, and, you know, they're just twisting it to make it sound worse than it is and make it, like, you know, clickbait. Yeah. And 
I think it's kind of something, it's more of like a general media problem than it is just a video game problem, because obviously the video game industry is the industry I know best, so I see these things, but probably, I guess the thing that I follow probably second most is politics, just not really because I want to, but just because it's <laughs> part of life and it happens all the time, and obviously this type of stuff is rampant in politics, I mean like... Honestly, any media problem you can think of in any industry you're talking about, it's that times 50 in politics because that's it's bigger and it's the yeah. way it is. It's just that type of thing. It actually affects people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whereas this is, we're talking about video games at the end of the day, which is kind of why I like to talk about this stuff. Yeah. Well, I guess arguably those kind of clickbaity things can affect people's livelihoods if people take it too seriously. Yeah, and he's, that's what Jason's talking yeah. about a lot with this is that this actually does affect like the way that EA treats the game and the way that like they have to go in and make this game and they they're seeing like someone is making sitting down like heads down making Anthem or whatever and they go online they see oh EA's trying to fix Anthem Anthem's falling apart this that or whatever and it's demoralizing I'm sure. It isn't I don't this may not be exactly the same thing, it's kind of similar, but this reminds me when reading interviews from the developers of Mario Plus Rabbits when um you know, all this stuff happened when the stuff leaked. Yeah. <laughs> all yeah. those crazy headlines when we didn't really know that much or whatever and reading interviews with the developers saying, Yeah, we read that, that was very de- like that stuff being demoralizing. Yeah, yeah. And this type of thing, like one thing I've been thinking about with this like and I don't I don't think that this is so rampant that it's happening everywhere and this type of thing makes me appreciate more and more the easy allies mm-hmm. type and the kind of funny like these type of groups that are the basically these like media groups that are independent and kind of Patreon or crowd funded there I feel like those groups are a lot more able to just show the fair and balanced like coverage of things like that and just give their opinions or whatever and not have an inflammatory because they have an audience that might be a smaller audience, but they're actually supporting them mm-hmm. financially or whatever. Whereas like, I feel like lots of other things, they like live and die off of the clicks and everything, which obviously easy allies and kind of funny, like they need views and everything. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? I think yeah, yeah, it, easy allies, at least for the podcast stuff where there would be the most clickbait. They mm-hmm. just, they don't even have what they're talking about in the title or the thing. I and mean, they just say Easy Alley Podcast number, blah, blah, blah. And they're able to do that because they have people who fund them. They have people that go yeah. there for what they, for their analysis and would like them. And it doesn't matter. Like, they don't have to get them in with these, like, things. Mm-hmm. And with kind of funny, I mean, I think they they talked about this stuff on their Games Daily thing yesterday. They mentioned it some, like, um, Tim Geddes, the one who apparently puts at least a lot of the stuff together, mm. the titles and everything, says, "Yeah, some of them might be clickbaity, but he said he, you know, definitely tries to put regular titles. I think he does a good job at like the ones that are a little more out there are usually for more goofy stuff." Yeah, and I mean, like, in not, not anyone's ever going to be perfect. And like I said, like this is a like I want to walk. I I want if anyone ever like for me, even when I work at a daily game cock or work anywhere. If anyone thinks that, like, something, like, I think you need to call these things out when someone is doing a, a headline that's not representative of what the actual thing is or it seems clickbaity and stuff because it's easy to accidentally do that sometimes. But I think there's a difference between slipping up sometimes and having a bad headline and actively, like, this is how we get our views. This is how we get our people is we have some crazy thing in all caps to the... It's maybe half true, or maybe it's like bending the truth a lot just to get people to click on it. All right, I got the title for this episode. Microsoft desperate, giving games away for cheap. Exactly. No, exactly. <laughs> I mean, that's the type of thing. I mean, every single time I make a headline with this, like, it goes through my head. Like, yeah, I could make this. There are so many different ways. Yeah. I could make this, like, you know, capitalize. They, they, it's bad. I need this. Or they're, like, desperate. Yeah, like, those type of things, because those get clicks. Oh, the. Uh, I just thought about that just now, the Microsoft thing. I, I bet if I try to try that in the multiple videos. I'm sure. Kind of thing. <laughs> I, I absolutely, I guarantee you that's, that's a thing. And it's, and, and I feel like, like, to a point, I'm not saying that, like, these, these people like EA or any of these, like, me and you have bashed EA a lot on this yeah. podcast, and rightfully so sometimes. Like, you know, I'm not saying that we should need to, like, sugarcoat everything or, like, 
not criticize companies and people when they need to be criticized. But there's a difference between that and and, and you know like intentionally making your coverage or like what attracts people to mm-hmm. it something that it's not. Yeah, like that. And when it comes to people like the no, which again, there's many more than just the no, but just people like the no when. Especially them where how high profile they are as far as mm-hmm. they, they get like 80,000 views at least usually for like their videos sometimes over 100,000 stuff. They have a decent amount of people like watching their stuff or whatever. And so I feel like at that point and when you're not like we're all over the place but like Tim Gettys talked about like in the kind of funny games daily the other day about how the no has a certain tone about them or whatever and that makes it okay that they have these type of headlines where like i disagree because i think at the end of the day you're still like that show i watched it enough to know like back in the day they're giving the news they are giving the news they're reading a news article and doing this and when you're giving the news i think you have an obligation to do so in a way that actually gives the news yeah. the way it is. If you're doing people, entertainment, then that's fine. Like you, if you're goofing around playing a game, but when you're talking about an actual news story, you can't do it in an inflammatory way. And even if, I mean, yeah, like um, between you and Alex, or I've seen playing videos from the No to you mm-hmm. know get the general sense. Yeah, 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 like you can. Yeah, they give it pretty straightforward. I mean, yeah, some of it's kind of silly, but it's a lot more straightforward than like Tim made it sound. Right, like I mean, it's still it's still a channel. news channel. Yeah. You're saying this, and you can do it in a goofy way, but there's a difference between doing it in a goofy way and and bending the truth, yeah, from things. And like, I don't know. Do you think this is something that's more of a problem in games coverage, or do we just see that because that's what we pay attention to? Um, you say more in game coverage, like compared to before, or just to other different things? I suppose both. Um, I would say like compared to the past, just looking at games, probably just because that's just everything these days with social media and everything. Yeah. Compared to other things, I think honestly, game stuff is probably lighter with that. Just kind of we discussed earlier because well, politics is everywhere, so that's that's I'm kind of like yeah, throw politics out of. (laughs) And and even with like movies and stuff, I feel like even just with the gossip with the stars and everything, there are a lot more clickbaity things. That is true. That is true. I. Yeah, I think in, in the grand scheme of things, yeah, video games have less of this overall, mm-hmm. at least meaningful ones, because it, it may be a bunch of smaller people doing it, but... Yeah. You get know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I agree. I mean, I think it's... A lot of these problems, like, I have to, like, stop myself and think, like, is this, like, really that much more of a problem in the gaming industry, or is it just because that's where I'm looking? Yeah. And it's probably... that Because that's just where I'm yeah. looking. I'm saying it's not a problem, but yeah. Yeah. But... but I'd but say definitely a big problem. Other it things. is a problem because, and, and I mean, like again, I'm not going to say that we're completely not guilty of sometimes overreacting to certain things that happen. Whether it, even if it's not like inflammatory headlines and clickbaity stuff, it's sometimes EA does something or something else, and we just kind of immediately assume this. So like, there's a lot of assumptions made, and sometimes I think those are accurate, but sometimes I think we absolutely react to harshly on things or a game gets delayed so we're like oh it's never coming out it's this it's that it's that you know like Mm -hmm. i think everyone in this sort of media is guilty of doing that kind of stuff yeah none of us are perfect no (laughs) but i think it's important to try (laughs) i think it's important to try that and again i just like it's weird i didn't expect it to like go around this way but like i do like a lot like the it's kind of a recent trend but the trend of having like smaller media groups or whatever that are crowdfunded so they don't have to really worry about mm-hmm. that kind of stuff you don't have to worry about having clickbaity stuff just to keep your site alive when you have fans there supporting you for being you and mm-hmm. i like that a lot Hopefully that's the future more than. So, I have one example that's crowdfunded and everything. I'm not going to name them on here, but I'll mention it after we're done. Okay. It's crowdfunding the use of a lot of clickbaity stuff. You probably have an idea. I mean, it's. I'm not saying that it, every like Patreon thing is always. An oh no angel, no no no! But There's it's just one that stands out. And you'll probably agree with me. I'm not going to Okay. Any names on here? Well, you have anything more on that? Um, no. No. Yeah. That was kind of kind of more rambly than I wanted to be. But what <laughs> Sorry, it wasn't that much of a helpful discussion. Oh no, that's fine. But it's it's a tough thing to talk about, and it's 
yeah, it's not yeah. easy, but it's important. So, Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. well, thank you guys so much for listening. I'm or watching. Sorry that it got very dark. <laughs> we got <laughs> computer screens. Yeah, I, I just I've been looking at like you're just like lit up and like I'm like a lot darker. <laughs> you're an angel, uh-huh. Jeff, or devil. <laughs> yeah. I, I called you an angel and then you did an evil laugh yeah, so yeah everyone look forward to next week where I probably have more fighters like story impressions mainly I guess I'll bring back goals for a week Darby oh will you yeah that was the thing we did for a while yeah but then I got to the point where we, we having trouble because of school <laughs> well especially now if I, had, yeah. uh, if I had goals my goal would be pick up a controller yeah period <laughs> yeah I got a more free time this week and everything so I think I'm this is manageable finish the impatient because mm. that's unfortunately that seems like it's very short so that's manageable and i'll say i get through two of the three arcs of fighters okay i, I think that's manageable that's if not good. just straight up beat it yeah i think so that's good yeah well thank you guys so much for listening slash watching definitely mm-hmm. go to our youtube check out things we've put up a lot more stuff than we have in the past we have yeah. a mario kart let's play that i think is at least decently funny. Yeah, yeah. And we have a Nidhogg Let's Play, Life is Strange spoiler cast, Star Wars The Last Jedi spoiler cast. You need to play episode three, dang it, for Life is Strange. Jeff, we're lucky that I'm recording this podcast this weekend <laughs> with how much school I have to do, so we'll see. Okay. We'll see. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Thank you. See you next week. Bye. Hopefully. <laughs> see you next week. <laughs>